Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 188, recorded Monday, February 24th, 2014. The Nokia X announcement. Welcome to Twit's special report on Nokia's press conference where they're expected to... How's that? We don't have like a name that? for it. <laughs> it's, it. Well, they don't have a name. Come on. They Samsung need to Unpacked things. 5. Nokia press conference. Nokia's the thing. Press conference. You know. The, the press will be conferenced and uh, we'll be covering it live. They ex we expect them to announce an Android phone, uh, which is probably the shock value here. And it's a little awkward, isn't it? I mean, they're in the middle of selling their mobile division to Microsoft, yeah. and then they're they're sneaking this Android phone in there, and it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, joining us from uh, VentureBeat, uh, Devendra is it Deva Devendra Hardwar? Is that how you say it? Yes, Devendra, Devendra Hardwar, not Devendra Hardware, although that would be <laughs> really convenient. Yeah, uh, Devendra covers this. In fact, was in Barcelona two years ago. Mike was it as you were saying before we began in the Barcelona last year. Last year, yeah. Set the scene for us. It's yeah. a beautiful city. It's a beautiful city. It's pretty cold this time of year. People think, you know, it's right there on the Mediterranean. It was bitter cold. And the it's it's the uh, con this conference, the F FIRA, I believe it's called, the FIRA uh, Gran um, something or other. I'll get that mm -hmm. in a second. But it's a it's a massive conference center that is, um, you know, it's it's a lot like Comdex, a lot, of, lot like CES, kind of a conference room, but very European. Everybody's wearing suits. Mm -hmm. Everybody's dressed really nicely. They don't call the suits. attendees uh, conference goers. They say delegates. That's right. And they expect 75,000 delegates this That's year, right. 9,500 right. press. And Devendra, you were saying that some people say this is kind of a dying uh, event. It doesn't feel that way to me. It feels like, if anything, this is more than Comdex the place to be this year. Oh, sure. I think leading up to Mobile World Congress this year, a lot of people just didn't give it much credit. Um, over the past couple of years, you know, there haven't been that many big announcements there. But, you know, we're seeing this Nokia event, um, Samsung's thing happening in a couple hours. Uh, there's big stuff happening. And uh, I, I still think it's an event worth paying attention to, if only to see companies you don't normally get to see in the U.S. One of the biggest things that uh, I think signals a change, uh, sea change and a move toward mobile is that, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, is giving the keynote. He's giving Isn't the major keynote. Yes. Yeah. And for him to come all the way out to, to Spain and give a mobile conference keynote, of course, they, they just are in the process of buying WhatsApp. Uh, so they, they realize that mobile is the future yeah. of Facebook. Yeah. And it's really the future of everything. We're, and, and that's why this show is not dying. And this, is, this, is a, this show is right there in the center of the future of where things are going. Mike asked me an oh, interesting sure. question before we began. He said, would we be here if... If the rumor weren't that Nokia was going to announce an Android phone, and you know what, we probably wouldn't. <laughs> probably if this would. were another Windows phone from Nokia, sure. unless it were something pretty special, another Lumia, I think we wouldn't be here. And for that reason alone, it's brilliant for them to launch an Android phone because now it's getting everybody to pay attention to their Windows mo Windows phones. Here's a little hint: right now on the screen uh, in the uh, conference hall, uh, they're showing a lot of Asha phones. That's their low-end yes. phone designed for the yep. developing world, a place yep. where there's no subsidies. Um, it, I would expect that this Normandy, this uh, code name Normandy phone, is intended for those markets, not for That's the U.S. Correct. markets. That's correct. It's going to be a cheap phone. And even though that uh, obviously Microsoft doesn't want to do uh, an Android phone, probably, it's right <laughs> in line with their new initiative, which they just announced this weekend, which is they want to go after the low end, too. Everybody wants these emerging, emerging markets. The fact is the majority of the uh, world's population is not using smartphones, but will be in the next few years. So those are new users. It's, you know, the, the, the margins are pretty low, but th we're talking about hundreds of millions, possibly a billion or two people over the next five years. And everybody wants that market. Devendra, so, sure. that's, that's why Facebook spent like, what, 19 billions on WhatsApp, right? Because right. it's, it's basically for that. Yeah. Uh, Nokia is not yet a part of Microsoft, right, Devendra? Yeah, that deal's still ongoing. And that's probably why this phone, um, the rumored uh, Nokia X Android phone, that's probably why this is still happening. Because I can't imagine if uh, Microsoft actually had a say in what Nokia was doing right now, um, that this phone would actually come so, out. So it's but possible because... this will be the shortest lived phone since the Microsoft Kin. <laughs> yeah. That in other words, as soon as Microsoft finishes the acquisition, I think we're just waiting for China's approval. That's right. They'll go, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Kill it. <laughs> and we're, and yeah. it's Windows Phone because it doesn't seem to fit in the strategy. And yet, obviously, Nokia had to put a lot of effort in this phone because 
you're it, uh, well we don't know yet we're going to find out mm -hmm. soon uh Stephen Elop's about to take the stage in uh, 55 seconds um <laughs> i i i would imagine that in order to do this phone they would have to provide all the google mobile services that i i'm assuming they're going to use an asop kernel they'll use the basic android but they'll have to provide the location services they're not going to use the play store they'll have to have a nokia store that's right it, this is going to be a lot like the amazon phone or tablet mm. right so where they just completely replace everything with their own version of everything um there'll be microsoft services as well as nokia services so it's a it's actually there's a controversy in the press as to the degree to which microsoft is going along with this um some report that it's a slap in microsoft's face others say that this that microsoft is using google uh, and and is a full participant in all this, it's really uh, it's really an interesting thing, and there's still some unanswered questions. I do believe that there is a possibility that Microsoft could actually continue this phone for a while at least, just to see how it goes. They're going to be running Nokia, the mobile division mm -hmm. of Nokia, as a separate company. They're going to keep the Nokia branding. They're not going to suddenly be selling Microsoft phones or calling them you know whatever Surface phones or anything like that. They're going to keep running Nokia as Nokia. It's a strong brand. I would. It's a strong yeah. brand, and it's you know and and the 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 thing about Nokia historically has been that they've had a million phones of every description, right. and so for them to have one just one phone or two phones or three phones that are Android phones for a little while running Microsoft services, I could see potentially Microsoft. You know, remember. Satya Nadella is a new guy. We don't know what he's uh, interested in. We do know that he's interested in going after the third world, going after the market that this phone is likely to go after. And so, you know, maybe he's, I don't know, for lack of a better term, open-minded enough to allow Microsoft to own a company that sells Android phones. Mm -hmm. we, we he's don't a know. cloud guy, right? So for him, it's all about the services and getting on many as many devices as possible. That's right. Um, yeah. What's really interesting, though, is that... Uh, you know, yeah, it makes sense for Microsoft to test out Android for a bit, but there were all those rumors about Microsoft working on a Surface phone. And, uh, you know, I've had some chats with Microsoft people and they couldn't say it outright, but it's clear that they're working on something too. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with that device, which yeah. would have been Microsoft Produce yeah. and whatever happens once they get Nokia too. And I believe the... Sh oh, there we go. The As event has begun. The crowd here today, the excitement is positively palpable. The reason for that, well, you're naturally curious about Nokia's future given our continued leadership in affordable mobile phones. This is Stephen Elop, who was Today, for a while a candidate we'll for the CEO of Microsoft, was a Microsoft guy, went to Nokia. Now he's in charge of Xbox. The internet. <laughs> We're going to be true? building uh, among on other things, momentum yeah. across the Hope business. Things. For example, towards the end of 2013, we continued to show improving results. We saw Windows Phone become the fastest growing mobile operating system in the world. We've gone from a standing fastest start with That's Windows Phone. That's a fudgy kind of yeah. statistic. Yeah. I'm not sure. I... Share yeah. in it's easy to be the fastest growing when you're starting from nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. Like the United Kingdom, they doubled. Italy, yeah, when you go from 1% to 1.5%. Yeah, and of growth. course, our home country, Finland. I'm not saying that's As well that. as the same levels of market share and growth in, in emerging markets like Nigeria, Thailand, and Vietnam. We saw Lumia sales double year on year, led by the Lumia 520 and the Lumia 1020, see, a number of which I see right they here have in the front row hardware. taking great pictures. If they would have done an Android Lumia, in fact, forget the about Lumia it. They would have one of the 520 <laughs> oh, I think is you're right. the number one selling smartphone nice in hardware. the world in the 75 to 150 euro price band. An amazing success. Because Apple and doesn't offer a phone that we expensive. We continue <laughs> to introduce new innovation in and around Lumia. For example, he just last week, we Android introduced phone, Treasure <laughs> Tag, which is a proximity Nokia accessory other, that helps you find your product. bag or your keys if you lose them. And just two weeks ago, we launched the Nokia Lumia Icon with Verizon Wireless in the United States. Plus, we've added some fantastic applications to the Windows Phone ecosystem, including Instagram, Vine, Mint, Path, and Subway Surfers. Is that really work? Today, <laughs> I'm very pleased to announce Which of these that not BBM, belong? <laughs> Adobe Photoshop Express, and Food Panda will be coming Thank to Lumia. God, we finally have Food Panda. Now, we introduced Developers, yes. Yeah. Particularly yeah, in emerging markets. We're in going to see Instagram, a lot of interest Instagram, big, in Vine, big, Food Panda. No, now, <laughs> we introduced developers to the Nokia Imaging SDK last July. 
Since then, many developers have built Lumia imaging applications. This is a smart like move smart on their part. They've got a great camera picture. hardware, and, and, and today right. you're able to develop apps that actually appear as part of the camera app SDK yeah. to version through the SDK. This is, this is it, a good idea. It is brilliant. With this new release, once again, imagine we're that as an bringing Android. developers yeah. new features. Be up there with the top five features like easily. image editing, performance optimized filtering, and reframing. Plus developers can now realize the potential of a converged Windows app experience. The SDK for Windows Phone 8 and Windows 8.1 is derived from the same code base. So developers can reuse their code across the Windows platform well, it's not a Steve and Lumia. Jobs keynotes. That's, that's Starting today, <laughs> it never is. developers no, even can download Apple's keynotes the SDK no longer. from the Nokia developer site Nobody for Lumia, like yeah. Windows 8.1 tablets, Stephen's energy is good, PCs. and I think that's important. It's also clear that he is now, positioning this. It, we're not giving up on Windows year, Phone. Right. We launched right. many Contrary new to colorful ASHA devices. And we continue the ASHA's our run leadership their in version of Symbian S60. In fact, the I Nokia think even older 105, S, uh, which S40s. was a major hit yeah. here at Mobile World Congress just exactly one year not ago, a very up -to -date has been a tremendous system. hit with people. We are selling up to 1 million Nokia 105 phones every single week. It's a really impressive number. Great sales for a low-end phone. Now, this yeah. momentum yeah. is amplified well, look at as it. it's we a candy bar phone. That is, that is a feature phone, virtually. Business. I would have Once loved that phone 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 With Microsoft, Lumia, Asha, and our feature phones will become part of a broader family of devices and services. As Microsoft's new CEO, Satya Nadella said, and I quote, we have the opportunity to reimagine what we have done in the past for a mobile first and cloud first world, and we can do you new things. You said it things. to Vindry, mobile first, cloud first. So today, first, ladies and gentlemen, Microsoft. I'm going to show yeah, you a number sure. of new things that we're doing for people around the world. My first introduction today, I'm very proud to show this device, is the new Nokia 220, our most affordable internet-ready like mobile phone. A, a music player. Yeah. Hmm. It's very small. Yeah. Uh, apparently has 8-bit sound, which is really exciting. <laughs> That's adorable, actually. Yeah, though. Adorable. yeah. Uh, Looking at it carefully, hard to tell what OS the 220 is running. At 29 euros, Two, 29 the Nokia euros. 220 costs less than a month's broadband service, about fifty dollars, but opens up yeah, a yeah. lifetime of possibilities. At this price, millions of people can connect to the internet for the very first time using nothing else but the Nokia 220. Hmm. The Nokia That's the key. 220 Connect to the design for the is very durable, first time. And colorful, right. and comes people with these, this is for people in developing display. nations. It is they don't have internet access. Right. They don't way have a computer at home. For people to connect, gather information, and, and use companies the like Facebook have to love this. Using That's why WhatsApp Facebook makes it a lot of sense in a world people uh, where people are connecting for the very first time. That's right. SMS now, while is these apps are part of our daily lives, the Nokia 220 will introduce those apps to millions of people around right. the world right. for the very first time. That looks like Nokia's S20, but markets. with like Amigo skin. What's more? Interesting, yeah. People can use the Nokia it's definitely not Android, right? To explore yeah. the wider it looks world like online yeah. with mm -hmm. Microsoft's but Migo, uh, search, is still around. This was their kind of Linux-based Nokia Express browser. Was it, was it, were they using it on Asha? Into making they were using the it on the PeerView 808. Um, they were. The first time we saw that great PeerView camera, it never showed up in anything else. That was the only place. Computer in the chat room says the 220 is running S40. The basics. There you the go. The Nokia 220 is available in single and dual SIM variants. Dual swim, dual SIM, as you know, lets people dual swap the SIM dual cards dual on the go. Very big. That's a and we give yeah, and I, I had to ask about that, Nokia but apparently very important for a uh, migrant workers, people who travel uh, in you know two within megapixel these areas. Camera, yeah. Fifty-one hours of music. Did you say two megapixel? Two G internet and some of the Sounds world's like most it, yeah. popular yeah. social applications. So this, is a, this is a phone Available that... Available immediately for just 29 euros for the single SIM version, the Nokia 220 sets a new standard for a desirable first mobile phone. It's really pushing that concept, first mobile phone. <laughs> is, would this be an Asha, considered an Asha phone, Devendra? He didn't I say Asha. I don't think Asha. so. The Asha phones now, are touch-based from what I've seen. Okay. 
Oh, here there we go. As you've Separate. Seen over the last year, so this is the lowest end phone Nokia cells. So. Yeah, lowest end, touch base. I love their case. It's so rugged. Asha introduced design, color, and innovation like Fastlane. It also introduced Swipe to people in more than a hundred countries around the world. A lot of Slash Film fans here rooting for uh, you, Devendra. Last year, oh, awesome. we introduced a whole family <laughs> the of new yeah. Asha devices, <laughs> including to this. a That's 15 okay. you don't have to. It's a lot of <laughs> I'll pay attention camera. for you. Today, I'm very pleased to be introducing a new, even more affordable member to the Asha family. So these are full screen touches, yeah. touch phones. In fact, they don't. That does look like Android. Yes, it is. It doesn't look like there are any physical buttons on the front. Only now that that this is the Asha 230. Introducing I, the Nokia Asha 230. Yep. Our Nokia most Asha affordable Asha touch device ever. Well, that does look like it could be a repurposed Android. It's so hard to tell. It does have a camera. At 45 euros, the Asha euros. 230 is a stunning addition to the family with a fresh design and smooth navigation, including Fastlane, for young, aspirational people all over the world. So that's 60 Notice, dollars. by the way, WhatsApp right on the front on screen of that. Mm -hmm. for the first time. It's no accident. The Asha 230 so is an exciting first step US into dollars, full 62 touch. 62 bucks, sorry. Just like the rest of the Asha family, you can enjoy the phone's features just by swiping quickly and easily. The Asha 230 is a joy to use. Each movement is easy and What's fluid. Waking up the phone is wow. as simple as a double tap on the screen. When you swipe from the home screen to fast lane, it brings everything you love right into focus. And we've heard from many Facebook, people Twitter. that they love fast lane because it helps them get more and do more with every single swipe. At a glance, you can see how many comments your photo has received on Facebook or information about your last gaming session. What's more, the Asha 230 unleashes all sorts of creativity. The real question For is whether example, they'll even Asha say the word Motion Android at any point. is a point, new right? application right. that people mm -hmm. can use to create they colorful designs that. At, that you can save as wallpaper. People can even access that app from Fastlane to create a new design to personalize their Asha and share it it's nice. with they friends have their and family. Cheapest phone ever to now, and as it's, part of the Asha family, the it also brings another like really like interesting capability. Get by. Starting in April, people can zombies, get a software update that will bring a whole new experience to all Asha devices, including those that were introduced last year. This is our second full update to the Asha platform since we launched it. Something that's very different. Yeah, I don't think this is Android yet. Looks like no, it's still okay. S40. Is it? Yeah. This new it's real hard to tell for me. will include I mean, Microsoft yeah. mm -hmm. OneDrive, which is Microsoft's new name for SkyDrive. With <laughs> OneDrive, people will be able to store photos and videos straight to the cloud from and not, and, all and of here, their Asha I devices. thought it was Food Panda. I didn't. <laughs> the Asha software update also includes some great apps, smarter imaging, and Fastlane advances. It, the, the hardware looks kind of like a, with an wi -Fi, iPhone 5C. It, also it looks like a 5C. Free you can see why Apple went radio, to the 5C design. Which brings music, yeah. streaming, and Nokia was really quick playlists. to point out Apple. I think oh, that's colors. the mixed radio yeah. team over there. Dress. I'm kind of yeah. guessing. <laughs> the Nokia Asha 230 goes on sale immediately around the globe. So, Devinder, for just what is the what is the app euros. situation on these Asha phones? Now, is there a store? Or do they just there, come with the yeah, apps? Yeah, from what I've seen, there is a central store, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not a huge platform, so it's not like anywhere near the amount of yeah. apps that Android has more or something. And more people yeah. are buying a smart, affordable smartphone. Now they're jumping from Asha to Lumia. Than, mm -hmm. Let's say a hundred euros. To date, the Lumia family and the Asha family have given people great choices. The 520 is but a that fairly low cost phone. Range yeah, the Lumia is a massive yes. opportunity and runs Windows for us. What's their uh, according what's to their strategy analytics, things? for example, phone like that, the market for yeah. ultra affordable smartphones will grow four times faster than the rest of the smartphone market. So, we are going after it with multiple options at many price points to suit different needs. There's the X. We see a yep. different but complementary opportunity to introduce a stunning, surprising new family that strengthens our affordable smartphone portfolio. Family phones, huh? Here we go. As this is going on, by the way, Sony is uh, across town with a competing web con uh, press conference. They just announced their Z2 platform, the Xperia Z2. No, 
Looks similar so to the other experience I know. Plants vs. Zom, I'm glad. That's a great game. I love Plants vs. Zom. The screen's not big enough to show the whole name. Wow, this is a dramatic. Oh, it looks game. like a. Is that a oh. It feels like a Windows Phone tile experience. All right. Mm -hmm. As rumored. <laughs> Nokia X. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the new Nokia X and the Nokia X Plus. Nokia there X they are, Plus. ladies and gentlemen. Hmm. All right. They're very, they look a like small a small thing. Lumia. These are Either two a very small phone beautifully a designed, yeah. affordable They're really writing Nokia that design concept all the way. Yeah. That both of them run Android applications. And there's the word Android. They include yep. unique Nokia experiences, and they include a wide array of popular Microsoft services. So the rumors are pretty accurate. Pretty accurate, These yeah. devices have been crafted with painstaking attention to Four detail. Inch. WVGA they continue display. our pattern of bold, vibrant colors that make a unique representation. They come with Nokia's monobody design, allowing it to truly stand out. Building on our iconic design, the Nokia X and X Plus have a generous 4-inch touchscreen. The Nokia generous. X Plus also includes extra memory and more storage with an SD card, so people can enjoy yeah, even more multimedia experiences. Both the Nokia be low cost X all the way around. and yeah. the X yeah. Plus have fluid navigation that will demonstrate in just a second. And it includes an enhanced fast lane user interface experience. Now, we've preloaded some great applications on the Nokia X family. Fruit Ninja, Applications Facebook. like Skype <laughs> and Facebook. Plus, the Nokia X and X Plus are built Angry Birds, on the Vine. Android open source project software, Twitter, AOSP. which means people have access to hundreds of thousands of applications right out of the box. Well, that's interesting. Mm. With AOSP, we benefit from the Android without app GMS, and hardware A lot of these apps will not run without the Google Mobile services. But we have differentiated by adding our own services and user experience. As well, the Nokia X so BBM, and X Blackberry Plus introduce people to signature Nokia experiences like Hear Maps and Nokia Mix Radio, Q Mix Radio team. <laughs> okay. Radio is really big in the developing nations. Not so Plus, much here, but we are really is an important part of this. We customers right. around the world to popular Microsoft services, services like, like Skype Pandora are and really OneDrive, only US Outlook.com, yeah. and more so to come. Yeah, I would imagione, yeah. And the not Nokia available X many takes That's right. people to Microsoft's cloud, not <laughs> to Google's cloud. This was very Ooh. deliberate yep, there, there because it is. the Nokia yeah, X family, with was. this, Microsoft will be able to reach people it has never talked to before around the world. Again, this is the Amazon strategy. At the same time, yep. Use Android this approach to allows Android developers to out. easily bring their applications to the Nokia X family in just a few hours, if even that. People can access free applications from the Nokia store. It'll be a high-quality curated experience in the Nokia store. But as well, you can access applications from other application stores, such as the Yandex store or SlideMe. Yandex or is Russia. I don't know where SlideMe is. people can sideload applications I think it's pretty obvious Microsoft is involved in this. I mean, with, with oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. With the OneDrive now, and all that. Now, for developers, I mean, Nokia X is a great an way company, to yeah. increase revenue and growth markets. Well, they always have been. They actually make Excuse more me. money on Android the than Nokia uh, store according to is uh, optimized uh, for a lot of sources. Economy they make $1.6 billion dollars. want to start off right? with uh, licensing that Android. Are free. This is a we story from Android Authority. By offering different uh, monetization uh, methods. Uh, Android different Authority, methods Microsoft netted $1.6 billion. Markets. Dollars. For example, we offer from, uh, try and Android buy licenses, as part of our more e than it makes experience. on Android Windows Phone. We also have operator but, billing in place for people that do not have credit cards. That's our operator billing is right now up and running in 60 markets with more than 100. That's a, that, I operators. think an opportunity to make a lot These of money. These models have yeah. been mm -hmm. very successful for developers like Facebook and EA. So, time to get inside this device. I'd like to invite Neil Broadley from our mobile phones team. You know, You're watching live coverage of Nokia's mail. press conference in Barcelona, where it is uh, 8, uh, 40, 8.50 in the morning. Um, and yes, they've announced uh, an Android phone as well as a couple of new Asha phones. That's right. Some of the first experiences on our Nokia X family.
So, at the same time, Sony's event, they've announced their new flagship phone, the Z2, the Xperia Z2, which is the first Sony phone to support 4K video. And yeah, also makes it easy. Samsung's <laughs> been doing that on the Note 3, but uh, this will be uh, a new two device. of the Sony phones. And I think we're going to see a few when more of those. I suspect that will be a big screen. push. You see I've got for Sony, such a useless thing on mobile, but yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Well, Why? Sony makes 4K displays, you know, TVs. So. Now, the first thing you're going to see is that our home screen is directly influenced they come by our special Lumia glasses so you can see that resolution. based home screen. So I feel it, this is like the most excited anybody has been for low-end phones. So that's kind of funny. The home screen. It super makes fast, sense though because really nice growth has happened in the uh, in the and I uh, high end uh, to come to our phones. Screen, the fast mm -hmm. lane. And so, and we'll if you're going to continue to grow, you you really need to. So, uh, of what's incredibly important to people is do it in the part of the world where they haven't yet bought smartphones. But it's some it's, so it's ironic because you, just you know they're using the Android. Android. And, uh, and people are responding as, as if it's a regular screen, Android phone, but it, it isn't a regular really Android easy, phone. Really it doesn't nice have simple, many of the advantages. Boy, that is nice. But it, so it has the UI of a, kind of a Windows phone. We've also that, taken that, some other elements he, from but Lumia. They definitely took some liberties, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's very different. What he just showed was that you have these blocky sort of squares, and as you move them around, the other squares kind of move out of the way, very fluid, circular form. It was really cool interface. reminds me a lot of Windows Phone. It's actually more flexible than Windows Phone. Right. Microsoft must be annoyed. I wonder if Microsoft was involved in the design of this UI. I think Nokia's been clearly working on this for at least a year or two. Yeah. Like I, I would guess this has been a project radio, that's been ongoing. Free online on and yeah. offline maps from here and here drive satellite navigation. I mean, You'll looks, also see incredibly good. popular third-party the, the apps like performance Vine, of, of the screen uh, and uh, drawing and so on look too. fantastic. Now, one of the Way other elements than the early that we brought phones. to the Nokia X is the ability to use elements like folders and widgets to personalize your screen further. So, for example, yeah, this if I want to add a folder, I can just press and hold on a tile. Folders and widgets, oh my. <laughs> oh, Windows Phone just got a notification center. I'll create a folder for my app stores. This is something that Windows Phone does do not do, is, is folders. Just drag mm -hmm. and drop a tile into that folder and it gets added right there so really fast really easy to do so they didn't so mention the google play store lane, that's part of the google yeah, services yeah. if you make a handset experience. you can always use the open platform aosp so but in order to use google services you have to get google approval and, and clearly they, they don't want to live in the google world so i guess you could sideload apps from other yeah he said you could also do it from sd cards but i'm sure you could do it just by downloading apps too and I think the, the bigger so point is that a developer who is on the Google Play Store like can, just as they do with so Android alarm, uh, right here on uh, the fast lane, Amazon, takes me uh, the alarm, uh, you know, submit their the alarm, app to the <laughs> whatever the, right. the, the Nokia the store is. The big picture for well, users, well, though, is that it's confusing. I don't think users are going to know exactly what or how to go about interacting with regular Android apps. And... You know, it's, it's, it's another fork of Android. So I stand corrected. <laughs> Nokia does have folders for Lumia devices. Uh, that, that must have been part of the uh, recent update. People really value the ability to control what appears there. So, for example, we've introduced privacy features. Like, if you just press and hold on the fast lane, you can see with those little X's, I can immediately control and remove any elements of the fast lane I don't want to appear there. Now, of course, Fastlane is uh, uh, kind of a launcher. Access yeah, yeah. Apps. It's kind of this thing they made for the Asha phones, just for people to get to what they need to really quickly. Very briefly, in other uh, Mobile World Congress news, Qualcomm just announced a new Snapdragon processor uh, called the Snapdragon 801. 801. That's right, and it's expected to be the premium chip for 2014 devices. Almost everything, the high-end stuff at Mobile World Congress has the 800. Yes, Snapdragon 800 quad-core. Let's hope they don't cancel this one like four weeks from now. <laughs> that would be. They did that for the last chip, yeah. Did they really? Wow. Yeah, they announced one for uh, smart TVs and ah. disappeared a couple weeks later. The 801 has integrated 4G LTE Cat 4 and faster Wi Fi. It's also a 64 bit chip, which is significant. Yes. Apple, of course, uh, announced a 64 bit chip for its new generation of iPhones and iPads. And caught Qualcomm, I think, a little bit with their pants down. They didn't think, and they were right. Anybody on mobile needed 64-bit processors. <laughs> That's right. But 
since they're there, they've got to do it. And and it's you know chicken and egg, so that you have to you have to get the processor out there first, and then the dedicated apps that can really take advantage of it are going to come much later. But you have to get you have to get started. So, right. so what's interesting about the Nokia X? It looks like they also brought basically the Windows Phone keyboard to Android as well. Is it the same keyboard? Interesting. It looks very similar. Yeah. yeah. That's an initial introduction to the Nokia X family. That's a decent keyboard. It's not bad. No, I think it's usable. Um, I believe they were... Uh, Microsoft's about to add swipe capabilities the to Nokia it. The Nokia X and the X Plus and, uh, are great additions to the Nokia family. What about Cortana? The, LU and the, whole mobile the phone voice team act. That probably is something a little too much to yeah, do on a lower Yeah, that's show up on this one. Yeah. With these new things, we also wanted to introduce some bigger things. Some <laughs> bigger things. Family. I'm pleased to announce Tablets? that we have a third Nokia X device, the Nokia XL. Nokia XL, oh, your phone. Phone. X, X there Plus, and now an XL. It's the same OS, it looks like. Yep, looks like a the Nokia big honk conversion. The Nokia XL is a big, bold smartphone. It has a 5-inch display, five -inch display and a 5-megapixel yeah. rear-facing camera with flash and autofocus. It is a brilliant way to play games, Out of focus, you say. watch videos, and listen to By music. By today's standards, that's and not a huge phone, with but it's a big. big. Yeah. Front -facing camera, well, this is, you know, XL what they're doing is they're really covering the waterfront. They go from mm -hmm. the very lowest end phones with the 220 Neil, up to the 1020, which is a very high-end, expensive phone. And, yeah. the, the X series really covers all three of the kind of inexpensive phone. And again, in, this, in the markets they're going so after, a lot of people the use their phone as their only computer. Five so a five-inch one makes a lot of sense. WGA capacitive touchscreen, two megapixel front-facing camera, which is just perfect. LED flash, WVGA, at five inches. Back, so it's not super high resolution. Standout design and a beautiful camera with an LED flash. Is that 720? Is two megapixel front camera. Eight, no, WVGA is 800 by 480. So hmm. you've got a big screen, but not a lot of dots on that the screen. That yep. available and that's how they get the price the, uh, For Nokia yeah. XL, is Plants vs. Zombies 2 from our colleagues. And in fact, BBM is on all the front pages here. So yeah. Those of you familiar with Plants vs. Zombies 2, it's all about time travel. Here I am um, playing one of the levels in, uh, in the Egyptian level of the game. And uh, I've paused the game just so you can see some of the action on my phone. Hopefully, I'm This is a fairly that. challenging game at this level. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of uh, characters, and it's handling it okay. Uh, but again, it's not a super high res screen, 800 by 480, despite the size. On your uh, on your Nokia XL screen, so really, really tremendous, great title. In fact, really, a five-inch screen at that resolution is so I will just not something anybody who's used to higher-end smartphones is going to want. Yeah. Now, one of the other elements I wanted to show you. But that, again, reminds me of the Android days from a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yep. That's not the market. I mean, uh, this is an aspirational phone for. I think for the mar same markets that Asha is big in the developing world. This is like a high-end Asha in terms of the market. Now, the way I'm going to show you that. Is that interim to phone between yeah. on the home screen of the device and we have something called universal search as well which is a great way which to search is being of course my home screen. So, for example, <laughs> i'm a huge football fan so while i'm here in Barcelona, you're really throwing microsoft lots of bones here because yeah. Yeah. microsoft probably wasn't in the process of developing its own android phone now they get to pick one up just easily you know it's going to come down to how well they handle the back end services uh I think it's interesting they're saying Android. They're almost even sounds like implying this is as good as an Android phone. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they're not hiding it by any means like Amazon does. That's right. Yeah. They, well, they said it runs Android apps, but they didn't say it runs Android. So the language is very, very particular here. And they didn't say that it runs all Android apps. And yeah. It doesn't. And, and, you know, um, looking at this demo makes me think that it would, the most brilliant thing Microsoft could do is continue this phone. Because what they're doing is, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they have this uh, Android phone out there that's a competitor to their own Windows phone operating system. But people are using their services. They're, they're becoming they potentially fanboys of their uh, cloud services. So that's a good thing. And then you can, you know, when next time they get a phone, maybe they'll move up to a Windows phone. Right? Yeah, yeah. It definitely makes sense. They were trying to position Windows phone for low-end uh, uh, users as well. And that, I feel like it makes more sense to move to something like this and have people 
they bump couldn't right get up. the 520, which is their lowest end down below, I think, $100. I think it was $100. Yeah. Just yeah. Right. Way too expensive for this market. But also Apple's, right. Apple's whole model like is based on the gateway drug model. <laughs> they got a bunch of Windows users to use iPods. Got them into the Apple right. store. Next thing you know, people are switching. But this is the point: is Apple does not have a phone for these markets, and doesn't That's seem to right. want to have a phone. Right. In fact, the rumors yeah. are going to kill the 5C. They don't. They're really abandoning this market. Google, with Android, Samsung, all the other Android manufacturers. There are a lot of uh, third-party uh, AOSP manufacturers in China and India. Those, those, those people are very much in these markets. And now, Microsoft seeing an opportunity here. They've done very well in markets where the iPhone isn't. Uh, I think so, this is a smart move for them. I mean, Apple's the profits for let's, each let's Apple phone. What, let's see a OneDrive offer <laughs> of 10 gigabytes of free cloud yeah. storage available from the Nokia store. This is exactly this what you're talking you about, Devendra. Photos, this lock videos, them into the Microsoft ecosystem, the starting with OneDrive. And Get a Overall, one we're delighted to be able Skype. to offer some of the best of Microsoft with the Nokia X. Thank, Thank you, you, Laura. Thank you. Thank one you month everybody. free of Skype, and which is, I think, a compelling... Offer and 10 family. gigs free on a one All drive. three devices give people access to a world of Android apps Love through sneakers. the Nokia store and dozens of third for, uh, for crazy stores. Converse. But unlike <laughs> competitor devices, I think I remember them. I'm not sure if it's a trend for him, though. Experiences and popular Microsoft services through beautifully designed quality I think this is a win. Nokia devices. Yeah. I really do. I think I this do. is the smart. Nokia There's a risk of having such a broad range of products that it confuses consumers. The but I think X these products are targeted to different markets. Early Q2 um, certainly the U.S. market euros. is going to be confused because they're not even going to see the Ashes or the 220s. They're probably not going to see the Android. Early Q2 right. I mean, an Android phone is kind of a... Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> early Q2, 109 euros. This overlaps strongly with the 520. That's the same. Starting in growth markets. The the base X is ninety nine euros yeah. or no eighty nine so yeah it's still expensive but that, you've got yeah. this announcement you've got the two twenty which is very really obviously very inexpensive to step aside and give you some strategic context eighty nine euros one hundred twenty two dollars full family that's, of devices that's pricey yeah Lumia that's basically five twenty to be territory. our primary right. smartphone strategy well this way they Lumia don't erode what the Asha was really good at right. so. You can step it all the way up, yeah. It's pretty smooth from gradation from the very mean. low end to the very high end. Mm -hmm. You can pick a price point. And again, an Android phone is a is a is a status symbol in some countries, right? Live tiles, You're using Xbox an Asha. games, right. and many other elements. These are good-looking phones. The Nokia X <laughs> family serves the fast-growing, affordable smartphone segment, in particular for people in growth markets. Nokia X products will generally be priced below our Lumia smartphone family. Okay, As we go. go forward and in the not so distant future, you should expect to see Lumia devices launched at lower and lower price points while we push the Nokia X family to price points that trend below that. Mm. By using eventually Microsoft I'll just disappear services, probably. Nokia X yeah. becomes the XL's a feeder system in Q2. for Lumia. We are X available immediately. I don't know if this is us or the bandwidth uh, coming from uh, Nokia, but uh, their stream has just died. They need to pay um, Comcast for a special. <laughs> so, so Devendra, is this about what you expect? using the Android open source. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. It doesn't erode anything that Nokia is doing right now, and uh, you know, it makes it's interesting that they're talking about growth markets, whereas normally we hear people talk about emerging markets. Right. And as everybody's trying to attack, you know, or get these next uh, billion sets of users, we're going to have to think about markets in different ways. You know, the ones that are slightly above emerging and then the ones that are, you know, a little more advanced. Right. I think it's interesting that they actually kept the XL now, secret. I haven't heard rumors mm -hmm. about the XL. The, the rumors were pretty dead on for the Nokia X. Yeah, yeah. With but strong Nokia attributes like design, quality, and reliability. We'll win with unique Nokia experiences like Hear Maps and Mix Radio. I really wonder how we'll much these devices cost to build. Because uh, the hardware we'll I saw leaked online was really, really low end. Yeah, yeah. Fast it could be really cheap for them. The familiar tiles. And but if they could actually make a profit from a low end phone, that would be amazing. But for Microsoft, it's also a longer term strategy of getting people into the Microsoft ecosystem. That's right. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he's just, we've heard he up, just positioning this Lumia is exactly that. That's right. He's doing a better Microsoft job of selling Microsoft's cloud services than Microsoft has. He is. Kind of hilarious. Uh, I think he's doing a very good job. I wish our uh, stream were a little bit better from uh, Barcelona. <laughs> You're watching live, yes, live coverage. Poor uh, Devendra, it's three in the morning in New York.
Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, it's midnight here, and uh, but it's nine a.m. in Barcelona, and that's why Nokia's conference and Sony's conference, and apparently Qualcomm's conference, is all going on right now. That's right. Yeah, First I'm gonna go to sleep and wake right up for the Samsung thing. Yeah, so. us too. It's fun. <laughs> us too. Touch phones like the new Nokia Asha two thirty. Our new Nokia X family, which are affordable now. smartphones yeah. with Android apps, Nokia so experiences, and Microsoft services that this designed thing have for growth economies, milliamp hour battery, and our primary smart strategy, Lumio, which is where you will see the greatest But on a device this, like this, it might be long enough. I mean, we, it's hard to tell. Experience. I think it's... Yeah, yeah. If it's a one gigahertz yeah, CPU, as I mentioned, right. could again, go for a while. Today, we are Low introducing a number of very new things to people all around the world. I think the key on this future, is, and he even said so this, these are AOSP Android devices, but on Microsoft. top of it, Nokia's Nokia great services. The Here services are really good. The, the Here mapping is really good. Microsoft's OneDrive, Microsoft's Together, Bing. We can I think this is saying we're going to make an Android phone that's a better Android phone than the clunky AOSP phone that a lot of these emerging markets are getting. That's right. That's a, that's a good value proposition. That's right. And they're not For going sure. to be selling it as an, here's an Android phone. It's going to be it's like, not a generic here's a, phone. Here's a high quality phone, yeah. full screen, that has all these awesome services. Yeah. And software. There they are. They're wrapping up. That is uh, <laughs> either that or they're frozen solid. <laughs> Uh, well, if anything, it looks like this uh, This sort of justifies the Nokia acquisition, if that goes through. So, yeah, yeah, it puts Microsoft in a very good position. Good morning, mm -hmm. everybody, and thank you again for joining us today. So the, the stream is on there. The and I'm part of the Nokia. Yeah, no. they're, they're having, everybody's reporting. This is not just stream. us, right. this it's is going us. on. Um, and I think that I don't, I'm not sure what they're going to do next, but I would guess that she's going to invite the press to go see those phones, right. touch the phones, and that's typically what happens at the ends yep. of uh, these events. Um, I. I think this does, I think you're exactly right. This does explain a Microsoft's acquisition of Nokia, and it positions Windows Phone, I think, quite well in the one area that, of growth that still remains. You can say right. Samsung and, and Apple can fight over the U.S. market, over the European markets, um, and, uh, and we will compete fairly well with the high-end Lumias there. That's right. But, mm -hmm. but but we can look at much larger market shares in areas where they aren't competitive. The bigger Microsoft yes. strategy is to go after these uh, emerging markets. Yeah. And they're not ready yet with Windows Phone. They've just announced a whole bunch of new announcements, new OEMs to build the handsets. They've announced new uh, criteria for building a phone. They've kind of dumbed it down a little bit. You don't have to have a camera anymore to have a Windows Phone, a bunch of other things. Yeah. But in the interim, they're probably going to, continue with this Android phone, this Nokia right. strategy of covering the entire uh, bottom to the top and, of the and market. And by the way, it's not a bad strategy. Microsoft announced uh, uh, today as well at, at uh, MWC that the 520 had outsold all Android phones in the UK over Christmas. So they have, a, a, I think, a compelling product in, in many markets. Um, Mainly Europe, you agree? it looks like. And, and even Europe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what we've seen from Windows Phone, especially the cheaper ones, it's, they're selling really well in Europe. And in some countries, they're even dominating smartphone market share, which is kind of interesting, um, or at least dominating market share for new phones, I believe. Um, but it's a really, the thing is, Microsoft has been promising so much for so many years. A couple of years ago, they talked about how they would attack the low end with Windows Phone. But mm -hmm. yeah, those devices got, haven't gotten cheap enough. And, um, you know, it kind of shows the need for Nokia to make something like this. Uh, if Windows Phone was performing as well as Microsoft had wanted, uh, this phone wouldn't exist. But the Nokia X is clearly filling a void right now for Microsoft and Nokia. And that probably explains why Microsoft executives are just a little, they don't quite know how to talk about this phone yet. They don't, yeah, they seem kind of awkward just discussing it. Well, I think Stephen Elop does, and I think he yes. does a great job. Yep. Uh, and I think he's the right man for the job. I'm very impressed. Yep. Is he moving away? I think he's doing other stuff. He's moving into, you said, Xbox. And Xbox, and his title will, it, it's all it's consumer, which is right. odd because he doesn't. Oh, yeah. Well, he consumer. did a great job, though. I, I yeah. thought it made a very <laughs> compelling case for these uh, yeah. these phones. That was a, that was a good presentation, and uh, he made a compelling case for uh, for them. And, they, you know, they, they sound like they're going to be appealing. Uh, now it's a, a matter of getting into the relationships in every right. single country. A lot of times it takes a lot of money. And in, in some countries, there are single companies, usually it's Samsung, dominating the marketing. You see yeah. every billboard is a Samsung billboard. And so this is one of the things they have to fight. And in addition to Samsung in these markets, the Chinese uh, uh, upstarts that are growing very, very fast in China who are using the Samsung model of going after the low end and then building into the 
into the mid-range and, and then ultimately into Europe, Japan, and the United States. That's the long-term Samsung model that all these Chinese companies like ZTE and others are, are using. And so this is another thing that Nokia has to contend with, that Microsoft has to contend with going forward. There's just yeah. so much competition. Nokia has a powerful brand in a lot of countries, and I think we've forgotten about that in America, too, because we never got the cool Nokia stuff. Right. You know, that was always in Europe and other places. Um, so I think they can really rely on that. Um, and another thing, too, like it'll be really interesting to see how this uh, how the lower end market kind of builds up. I think Lenovo just announced that their Windows license, Windows phone licensees now, too. Yes, they did. LG yeah, so. as well, Foxconn. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that surprised me a little bit. I thought with that... Motorola is going to be a really interesting competition for, yeah. for Nokia. I yes. thought with the Microsoft's acquisition of Nokia, it might kill the thir the third-party uh, Windows phone marketplace, but apparently it has not. This yep. this is all very good news for mm -hmm. Microsoft, which really has been a laggard with Windows phones. It's interesting that LG was announced today, though, because they, yeah. uh, they, they made some of the Windows early phone. Windows phones. Oh, yeah. interesting, but they're back. I, mm -hmm. uh, the, the speculation is that they've they've uh, they've have a newfound commitment to the platform that they're really going to jump in there and, and be more aggressive with it. So they're, they're clearly not a new one. There's some other companies that kind of threw me off. Uh, Gioni, JSR, hmm. Carbon, Lava, Long Cheer. That's for all those other markets yes. that nobody's yeah. going to touch. Yeah. Yes. Anybody big have a Long big Cheer in Nigeria. Phone? Yeah. Uh, hmm. There is a Q&A going on right now. I don't know, John, if we completely lost the feed. Uh, one yeah, of the, they usually kill the feed for Q&A, okay. unfortunately. One of the questions, uh, not sure who it came from, uh, the, the journalist says, you mentioned sideloading of apps. Any standard Android app can be installed. Do you support Google apps? And the answer was, yes, you can. There are certain Google apps that use certain APIs, but the vast majority run out of the box. Yeah. If certain apps call APIs, there might be a recompile needed to run on the Nokia X. He's talking specifically about things that call Google mobile services, That's but, right. I would imagine. Uh, mm -hmm. They did not attempt to do API compatibility with GMS, but uh, I think they're, what they're saying is if you're a third-party developer, anybody but Google, do recompile, you know, call our, our APIs, and uh, you're going to have a, a new market. Yeah, and I actually, you know, if these phones are successful at all, Google will want to participate, um, will want to join up with Nokia for these things, because I think the most compelling feature of Android right now is Google Now. And Google wants to get that on That's as true. many devices as possible. That's right. So, yeah, if Nokia wins um, with these phones, you know, eventually Google Play could show up. The sale of, of Motorola was Google acknowledging they weren't in the phone business. They didn't want to be in That's the right. phone business. They just wanted Android everywhere. Well, they're they're in the phone technology business. That's right. Yeah. And in the mobile the weird technology phone business. prototypes. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I really, well, that's true. Yeah. And I really think one of the most exciting announcements that came out this weekend is uh, we learned that. Uh, that Google and LG are going to be working together on what's almost certainly going to be a Nexus smartwatch. I saw that, yeah. mm -hmm. And that's probably going to hit around this summer. It'll probably be handed out like a candy, like an Oprah show or something like that <laughs> to people at Google I.O., which is in maybe, like, Yeah, maybe in time for I.O. That would be nice. June, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. looking that way. But, but again, that's what Google is doing and what they should be doing. Google, you covered today on Twit the, uh, the, the, the project Tango. Yeah. That's another example of Google taking strong leadership position in the technology without selling the product itself. Right. So that's really, Google is back. Like, you know, Google is doing what it should be doing instead of selling hardware. And I think... Yeah, because they stink at selling hardware, they do. actually. They do, yeah. as, as it turns out. And I think Microsoft shows that uh, this might be a three-horse race. There, right. there is a shot uh, for Windows Phone. Uh, I think we should wrap it up. Well, you and I have to come back here early tomorrow. That's right. I'm sure that, Devendra, you'd like a few hours sleep before... Sleep no. would be good, yeah. ...unpacking the yeah. S5. Really great to have you. Devendra uh, is a senior editor at uh, uh, VentureBeat, where you cover the mobile space. And many of our, our fans recognized you from Slash Film. What is that? Yeah, I do. It's a movie uh, website, and I do the podcast there every week. I just review a movie. We just did uh, House of Cards recently. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. But thanks for having me, guys. This was yeah. a ton of fun. We'd like really to have you have back you. On, on Tech News Today sometime as well. So uh, Would we'll, love to. we'll be in contact for sure. Devinda Hardawar of uh, of Venture Beat. Yes, thank you for joining us. Well, Mike, Thanks, guys. thank Have you a good night. for uh, thank you. Take care, Devendra. Yeah. Thank you for uh, I when I proposed coming in at eleven thirty. So it was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Mike did not say no. Uh, I think it's important that we do uh, we do this live coverage, and I, uh, I do too. We've always done it for Apple. Uh, we started doing it for Samsung, and I don't think I want to leave out uh, anything as exciting as what we just saw. I think this is a historic moment. Yeah. This is a very, very unusual situation. It's an unusual strategy. Everything about it is different. 
I mean, you're, they're in the middle of this uh, sale to Microsoft. Microsoft is in transition. They have a new CEO, only their third CEO in their history. So it's a whole new Microsoft. It's a whole new Nokia. It's a whole new Android eco ecosystem. And, you know, the, the Mobile World Congress show really could be called the Android World Congress. Yeah. It's, t Android is so dominant there. Yeah. And so this is a really interesting development, and I'm glad we covered it live. I am too. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Thanks to John Slanina for staying up. He had a long day today as well. Uh, and uh, we will be back tomorrow morning early, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon uh, Eastern time. We're going to do an early edition of iPad today. We're recording two tomorrow. Then, Mike, you have the helm right. with uh, TNT. Right after, we'll be doing live coverage that's of right. Samsung Unpacked. Samsung Unpacked, and that's going to be a really interesting announcement. The Galaxy S5. It's going to be lots of stuff, lots of stuff. And I think there's going to be a waterproof, rugged ice phone in there. I really do. <laughs> it's going can, to be cool. I, I love those count on it. Supposedly, I can drop this Xperia in the water. We should We should have brought an aquarium. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. On Twitter.